Those big old cryptars. Oh, look at that guy. Look at him. Oh, poor lad. Poor lad. Looks like he's had a rough night out, just come home and collapsed. Thank you to everyone who contributed to the uh, poll that I ran. Um, it was about 69-70% in favor of opening up the restrictions for both cannons and grenade launchers. So I will be recruiting those in this episode. Uh, Volkmar's going to wipe these guys out. These guys are going to recruit. Then Volkmar's going to go up for this book. And these guys are going to go down there. That's the plan. Great Please don't declare war on me. That changes things for the worse. Okay, the good thing is the defensive allies with the Order of Lore Masters. The bad news is the defensive allies with the Order of Lore Masters. If they were military allies, I would be in deep shit here. But as it is, I'm in, you know, knee-deep shit. <laughs> Rather, neck-deep shit. Uh, we're just gonna charge this. Pretty simple. I think we can breach that in one turn. Yep, just barely. Ooh, a defeat in the auto resolve. Okay, decent looking map. Gonna rely on Volkmar quite a bit, but not excessively. Really gonna send him in, maybe go for the capture point, but I'm not gonna win that way. I'm gonna primarily use the free company militia. Alrighty, we're all hidden here. Bada boom, bada bang. And Volkmar is probably gonna charge in over here. I feel like this is the best side. Yeah, we'll just start moving up immediately. But then Volkmar here, it's just gonna be tanking, basically. He might kill some things, that would be great. But primarily, Volkmar is going to tank and just get them to start over here. That's the main thing he's doing. Because I don't want them to start on the walls here. Gotta keep our resistances up. Oh yeah, Volkmar's going to do a lot of damage there against those Pegasus Knights. You guys go up there. You guys go back over here and kill them. Volkmar's taking a lot of damage, but he's fighting extremely high value units. It's worth using his health on them. Alright, Volkmar's hit his regen cap. That's not great. I do want to reduce the amount of damage he's taking from here on out. Okay, those knights are gone. You guys move up here. Try to shoot her. Uh, looking good over here. You guys all move up. Little rougher over here. But we're just going to make sure we're all shooting. And we should be okie dokie. We did take some damage, but not an immense amount. Yeah, lost a third of Volkmar's health and about a third of our overall strength. Um, Gotrick, because these guys declared war on us, is going to just dip back up here. Now, over here, what is this looking like? A decisive defeat. I'll see if I can straight up attack this with Geld. So, this is going to be a long and pretty slow one, because I'm just going to use Geld as efficiently as possible. Alright, all of my important troops, I'm going to hide up here in the trees, because my reinforcements come in here, I'll be able to hide them either down here or in the trees as well. Ooh, they are shooting at me now. That's actually good for me, because I can cast on them easily. This should allow Gelt to trade pretty well with his magic. I don't need to maximize my damage dealt per wounds of magic, but I need to do pretty decently. Okay, I think I'll start moving units out now. Yeah, the, the balance of power is not much better <laughs> than it was earlier, because we just haven't been able to hit most of our spells, and also we've taken a decent little bit of damage on Gelt. Okay, all of these guys are still over here, and they have a few good units over there, but not much. Their army's very split up, but now I can just send Gelt back over here, cast on them as they get into melee with me, and then these motherfuckers are going to be so far behind. Yeah, don't shoot the zombies, shoot the terror guys, please, handgunners. What are you doing? Yeah, I think we win this, I think we win this. Extra armor and you should be able to fuck him up. Okay, the rest of our army's coming in nice and slow. Terror guys just going down. Okay, the last of them are going to be coming in pretty late here, very late here. All right. Blood Knights are going down quickly to those hand gunners. Okay. Oh my god, we might actually win this shit. Holy fuck. Ooh, part of our melee line's routing. Ooh, maybe not. <laughs> maybe not. If they get to the hand gunners, oh, they're getting to the hand gunners. Oh wait, no, they're getting the army losses. Right as they get to my hand gunners, they're getting the army losses. Oh. Is that it? Oh my god. Gelt himself lost barely any HP. The cannons are still why are you still firing? Just shooting friendly units. Overall, I think the most important thing we did was split up their army and just let the AI make mistakes. 3,000 damage dealt is gold value from these hand gunners, and Gelt himself got 4,000. Oh, and they're now taking attrition here. What's up? Here from the editing bay. So, right where it whoosh there, that little cut, it's the next day now. This, this section of footage is from the day after that last bit. I manually saved the game right before the end of the turn, Closed it out, went to bed, woke up the next day, loaded it. 
I think that's the only explanation I can find for this. It must have been something to do with recruitment and that, but you'll see what I'm talking about here in a second. Wait, what? Why does Gelt have full movement range? I could have sworn that I already moved Gelt this turn. I'm 98% sure that I broke the siege this turn. I might be tripping, but I'm gonna just, because Gelt has movement range, I'm gonna use his movement range. Fuck it, I'll try it. I'll give that a shot, man. Heroic victory auto-resolve. Yeah, I'll auto-resolve that. Low casualties. Yeah, I'll have to rewatch this and make sure that this isn't a glitch or something. I do not remember Gelt having movement range. No extra movement range. Oh wait, oh fuck, they actually have an army here. Well, we'll see what happens here. Yeah, I'll just auto-resolve that, actually. I, I don't want to risk fighting that. That's a... I don't know if I'll win that in an actual fight. We're all mostly healed up here. Okay. You know, I'm just going to start moving everyone down there to Siege. What? Hold up. Both of these motherfuckers want to confederate with me now? Well, that brings the question, who's better to confederate? I'll give it a shot, man. <laughs> I guess. Oh, that's minus 2,000 gold, but these are also non-gun units in most of these armies, so I... Okay. I uh, can't have literally any of these guys anymore. I do want to keep Carl friends. He already has his quests most of the way done, it looks like. You're going to move to Kemperbad. You're going to keep recruiting in Altdorf. Oh, I'll have Volkmar go for this one first. Immune to attrition causes attrition to enemy armies within your territory. I can probably get this before I'm even done dealing with Siege. And that'll just be great to have. We're going to lose Peltdorf. That's fine. They can take it. But once I have three armies built up, I'll be able to push down into them, take all of the Vampire Count's territory. Okay, I'll have you scout over here. What can you see? Krokgar. Gotrick is just... He's just gonna chill. Go for guerrilla warfare tactics. Can you make it there? You can. What if I give you... This settlement that I'm 90% sure that I'm gonna lose anyways? You're willing to go for a non-aggression pact for that? Great. You are gonna give Gelt your shit. I'm gonna save money. Disband you. Get rid of that thousand gold yes. from the supply lines. And Gelt is going to keep recruiting at max speed. Ooh, I can get a defensive alliance with the Ice Court. That could allow me to eventually build an outpost and recruit some Kislev units. That could be great. Armored Kossars and Streltsy and Light War Sleds also use guns. All of them use guns. Um, do yes. any dwarves want to be friends? Oh my god, Karazik Rack wants to uh, be our ally. Okay, and they want to pay us gold. Ooh, Krokgar. Oh no. That is a lot of fucking attrition that I can do nothing about. Okay. Well, I have no real choice here. Other than to take that attrition, just tank it for a moment. Uh, Volkmar should be able to wipe out Rapunzel A. She'll have this thing, but it can't take a settlement, so... Yep, they're done. She'll have one tiny little army with two units that cannot take a settlement. She's effectively dead. Nice. Why do you suddenly want to be my friend? I don't know. But I will take that shit and I will not charge you anything. Okay, there's a scene army. It's strong. What is our movement range? What happened to our movement range? Where did it go? I haven't done anything this turn with these guys. I haven't moved them. But I have no movement range. This will be fucking gigantic for dealing with Siege. So I'm gonna beeline for that, because that will get rid of all attrition for me. Alright, we have movement range this turn. We didn't last turn. That is an improvement. Uh, What are you doing there? Just hiding. Okay. I'm just, I'm just gonna burn that shit to the ground. <laughs> that seems like the right thing to do. Okay. One of our groups is taking attrition. The other three are replenishing... Mmm, that was a mistake. That's not a very good army, though. Neither is that. Or that. I think these two armies can beat them. Come on, attack me. You know you want to go for it. Wait, are you actually going to do it? I should be okay here. I'm not sure if I will be, but I should be. Really hate Siege. Really hate them. Really hate that mechanic. Okay, they're immediately casting on me. Um... We lost this already. They have so many leadership buffs. I really think that CA needs to take a look at them, the way they function in campaign, because this does not seem balanced. Like, we've already routed here. We're already gone. 
I'm not even playing on Legendary. And we've just already lost this battle. That's that's absurd. Oh, and I'm, I'm out of Encamp Stance. All of them are out of Encamp Stance. I'm taking attrition on all my armies now. What the fuck are you doing? <laughs> He's just going for a jog. <laughs> what? Why are you attacking Wurtbad? My armies are right there. I'm, they're just going to let me take Averheim. The AI giveth and the AI taketh away, but holy shit is the AI terrible right now. I don't know what is happening. 4v1 and a half, and I can't even auto-resolve this. We're just going to hard rely on these war wagons. They're really going to be 80% of our strength here, effectively. We might take this in the long term. But even then, just fucking barely. Okay, we're in a good position here finally, though. We can trade well here. These guys will die, but that is fine. Because we're going to win this battle overall. And once we're immune to attrition, that will allow us to actually start winning this um, war. <laughs> rather than just a battle. Oh my god. That was so painful, man. We should have auto-resolved that, realistically. But the AI does know how overpowered Siege is. Lots of value on the war wagons. No value on anything else. Over here... Are you a siege attacker? You are. Oh! 10,000 sack value! This is a pretty big and awkward map. Maybe if I could go for the control points or something. Here from the editing bay again. This was a very good battle. I really enjoyed it. It was a long one, but it was fun, and there was strategy all throughout it. Unfortunately, though, I don't have a good way to include this in this video, so I've come up with an idea for this and other battles as well. I want to start posting edited versions of my battles on my second channel. My second channel is called Additional Stupidity. Uh, you can check that out. It has, like, zero subs now. I haven't announced it or anything yet. I'm planning to post both unit reviews and longer versions of some of the battles for my campaigns on there. Uh, I would rather have, like, additional things there. Some people are going to want to watch that. Not everyone is. That's fine. But if you're interested in that, click the card right at the top of the screen, and you can subscribe to my second channel. I will be posting this first video of this battle sometime in the next week. Back to the video. Oh yeah, that's the army loss penalty. Beautiful, beautiful. Not very many casualties, not too much damage on our legendary lords. I mean, 6,000 for loot and occupy, that's not even worth it. 10,000 gold, I need that shit. Ooh, France can ambush. Uh, over here, things are looking good with Volkmar. Ooh, Ooh maybe not. Defiled Bloodgrounds, and I think I need to capture Skaven Blight. Let me double check. I need to occupy Skaven Blight, and it says I cannot occupy Skaven Blight until the Herdstone is destroyed. I'm going to assume the Herdstone is somewhere in this region, because this is also a blood ground that's defiled. So it's probably it's probably somewhere here. I can get a high-level Arch Lector. Okay. They aren't attacking the settlement directly. So even if Godfrey gets wiped out, it's not the end of that settlement then. And we will still have this guy, but uh, it's still not a good situation. I don't believe it's winnable, but I will give it a shot. Oh my god, these guys are taking a shit ton of damage. Oh yeah, they're just in a wall of... Oh my god. Oh my god, Gotrick is not happy there. Uh, that was not the worst it could have possibly gone. We did wipe out three units, and we did some damage to most of them. Um, but we lost this army. Hopefully they're going to go for a peace treaty if I just give them one of my settlements. I want to get rid of our Ion's camp anyways. But I think they're just going to take it by force. Except for, I think my garrison beats them here. They have a bit of cavalry and just a lot of skink cohorts. I might try playing in the corner here. And the problem is they have so many units, they'll just tie down the Empire Knights probably. So I'll put them all the way over there, other side of the map. If I wait for them all to get into melee and then move these guys out, they should be able to charge into the back of the skink cohorts and, like, route half of those motherfuckers. The real advantage of this is that I'm going to just be able to shoot all of them while they're approaching. Because they're not going to be able to approach from all sides and all of that. Oh, wow, those, those pterodons are still fighting. Jesus. You guys are shooting well. Everyone's shooting pretty well here, it looks like. I'm going to charge right into there. That'll be juicy. That'll be a juicy charge. All right, let's look at this. Okay. Oh, that's a lot of value. That's nice. They should route here. They have very high leadership because their lord's nearby, though. Ready, 
Their lord's right on them there. I'm going to try to shoot anyone who's near routing at this point. I feel like that's going to be a good strategy. Great, they're breaking even more there. That's really good. Holy shit, the balance of power is in our favor now. Now one thing I noticed, and I'm not sure if I'm tripping here or not, and I mentioned this because I just noticed this again with the Empire Knights, it seems like units move dramatically faster when they're chasing another unit or trying to attack another unit versus when they're just, you know, trying to move. <laughs> it doesn't feel good. It feels like it's easier to chase down units than it is to move units to me. I don't think it's supposed to feel like that. Chasing every single unit off the battlefield with those Empire Knights. They've gotten so much value for us here. Only 700 damage dealt is gold value, but I think they've done more than that in terms of just forcing units to rout. I don't know. Okay, they finally routed. That was the definition of a Pyrrhic victory. And I don't know if I could have won that without wall camping. They might go for the ambush. Oh, they might get ambushed by me. Oh, shit. They failed to spot it. Oh, hell yes. Oh, I wish I got one of their better armies in the ambush. I mean, this one's barely worth anything, but still. I will make sure to wipe all of these fuckers out. Every last one of them. Those big old cryptars. Oh, look at that guy. Look at him. Oh, man. <laughs> oh, poor lad. Poor lad. Looks like he's had a rough night out, just come home and collapsed. That was good. Yep, wiped him out. 121 losses, probably half from friendly fire, to be honest. <laughs> okay. Do you still want to be confederated? You do. I am confederating them for the sole purpose of using them as a place to store my fucking guys and recover for right now. I need their settlements. You're both going to recover over the end turn. So now we have two free garrisons here. As well as just places to recover. Is that the best possible confederation? No. Does it massively improve our ability to deal with the vampire accounts in the short term? Yes. What about you? What's your situation? Minus 25 now. What if I give you Orion's camp? Minus 0.1. 534 gold and you'll take it. It's in an unpleasant climate. It's not built up. 500 gold and that. That's, that's a bargain compared to building up this army here. Building up a couple other armies in other places, all of that shit. I don't want to deal with that. Uh, why are you not at war with Sinch? Oh, you, you'll just join it for free then. I guess the answer to why he's not war, at war with Sinch is because no one's asked him to go to war with Sinch. <laughs> it was that simple. Awesome. Carl Franz is going to have some Thunderers and some Kossars. That's badass. I love that. Just moving my way there. Okay. Kairos Fate Weaver. Strong. Dangerous. I would like to get some war wagons in this guy's army, and I have six slots for global recruitment now. You're probably going to attack that, aren't you? Yeah. Oh, he's lightning striking me. I have no chance of trading well with this army. The other ones, maybe. Okay, I feel like with this army, I have a decent chance of trading well. Fuck, that is a bad balance of power. The war wagons, as always, are getting good value, though. And Kairos here should go down. He really should go down here. May lose this overall, but we've gotten a lot of value. I, I am war wagon pilled, okay? I am wagon pilled. Straight up. They're the only thing that seems to hit above their weight class against Siege in the Empire roster. At least in the gun options of the Empire roster. The balance of power is terrible here, but we're actually doing very well. <laughs> we've actually destroyed a lot of their units and taken a surprisingly low amount of damage. Not bad. We wiped out Kairos Fate Weaver, both of their heroes. Almost all of those Forsaken, almost all of their Chariots, just most of their good units. They have less than half of their army left in terms of their balance of power, maybe like a third. Alright, we lost one unit of cannons. Fine, that's okay. Yeah, three out of four of us are taking attrition, so that's the real damage we took from that battle. Oh yeah, uh, lost the Lord here. Oh, he got lost to attrition, that must have been it. Alright, I'm gonna try to attack that and just see what I can do here. And yeah, I'll fight this very cautiously, try not to take any damage at all. Honestly, it does seem like the balance of power with Siege might be a little broken, based off the units that they have. There is no way in hell I'm going to lose this fight. It would be very impressive if I lost this battle right here. But they have pretty much the same balance of power as me. Oh, that was that was boring as fuck, I'm not gonna lie. That was very boring. Yeah, we lost um 40 troops. They lost 531. Yeah. You can attack them. If Gelt reinforces, I think they're less likely to fight it. 
I'm thinking I'll fight this with just friends. But yeah, the Thunderers and Kossars, those will be fun to use. I'll give it a shot. This is going to be an interesting one. Really just got to make sure to shoot the right targets, not waste ammo on the zombies, and this should not be hard at all. Oh, that's a lot of damage. Oh my god, he's hitting every shot. Yeah, because that bonus versus large. Oh my, he's going to knock him out in like five hits. Okay, they're going after the armored Kossars. Ooh, while getting shot by a handgunner. Oh my lord, that Vargolf is dead. Yeah, that is so good. They're gone. That was beautiful. We lost nothing at all there, other than like a thousand HP total on friends. Alright, let's take a look over here. Where is that herdstone at? Blood ground. Yeah, I don't know where the herdstone's at. Maybe I just have to destroy this. Oh, non-aggression pact if I declare war on these guys who are probably never gonna attack me. Oh yeah, the Doom Seekers have no balance of power, so I will do that. I think I might have to give it one more turn. Oh, what's up, homie? Thank you for assisting me. That's great. If you can destroy that for me, that would be amazing. I might be able to deal with them. Might be able to do that. And I also just want to be out of the settlement with the plague. Okay, the front is not going to be the most concerning part of this. The sides are. Yeah, you just go straight after those fucking hex rates. Yeah, kill that. Kill that before it kills the cannons. Okay. Not bad here. I uh, shoot that Terrorgeist. Yeah, keep hitting it with that cannon. Don't shoot Carl Franz with the cannon. Great, thank you. Alright, move up here. Oh my god, we've already got the army loss penalty on them. We didn't even take much damage at all there. That's a heroic victory. I'll take that shit, man. I did not expect that. I don't know if destroying this... Yeah, I don't know if it'll fix the Defile Bloodgrounds thing. But I feel like it's worth doing regardless. Volkmar could probably just solo this without even taking a thousand damage. And they're done. That was not very hard at all. 43 losses. Uh, no health loss on Volkmar. He actually gained health from his regen. Hmm, I'll probably just raise this. Okay, did that fix that for Scaping Blight? Oh, it did, it did. Awesome, awesome. Looks like it's fixed for Scaping Blight. Great. Yeah, I'll, I'll get back there in like, probably three turns even with one turn of recovery. I'm gonna see what I can do. I, I think this might actually be the last turn for this episode because this has gone on quite a long time. And I feel like I'm getting pretty close to a bit of a conclusion here. We're really getting close to winning this campaign. Oh, 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 shit. All right, ambush failed, but that does not matter. What matters is we, we beat them one army versus one army. Uh, this won't be too hard at all. All right, we're going to split into two groups here. Should be able to pretty easily destroy them. Okay, I'm going to definitely manually target Isabella because I don't want to risk them shooting just zombies or whatever the fuck. Okay, they're dealt with. Great. Oh, Isabella's coming for the uh, Pistolers. That's awesome. That's awesome. Yeah, they can just deal with her easily. Great blob there. Drop that on it. And we'll just upgrade that. Drop that there. Good. They've gotten pretty deep into our ranks here, which isn't ideal, but, you know, we'll live. Okay, we're doing incredibly well overall here. Are you unbreakable? Uh, no, you're gonna die. Yep, yep, they're gone. We did lose a little bit here, but not very much. I doubt they're going to go for that now. Oh, they might. Or maybe not. Uh, Vlad is taking attrition there. I don't know what he's doing. These guys down here are doing okie dokie. They're not doing too bad. Yeah, then over here, I'm not going to fight this yet. But I should be able to defeat Vlad here. Might be able to get both the short and long campaign victory in the next episode. If I don't get the long campaign victory in the next episode, I might just not bother doing it. Because it's just, it's so much. There's so many different things to fight up here. This has been one of the most enjoyable Empire campaigns I've ever done, to be honest. I've actually been using units that I never normally would. I never use war wagons. So, yeah. Thanks for watching. Peace out.